today on Living by Faith. Thinking about because I know this one. I know my word has been proven over and over again, even at this age. See, this illustration won't even work because I have proven to her over and over again, if I tell her to jump, that man is gonna catch me. It's not falling apart. I decree and I declare that you will enjoy life. You won't faint, you won't cave in, you won't give up, you won't be in despair, you won't be depressed, you won't be overwhelmed, you won't be overcome. You will enjoy life. Turn to your neighbor and say, is that enough for you to say I'm going to enjoy life? During our week of uh, Bible study, there was a prevailing word that was spoken. And that word was the word trust. Say that trust. trust. And we had episodes based upon all of the different kind of circumstances that people are going through that allowed us to see that trust is absolutely necessary in our times. And, and I just hammered home, you know, trusting God and trusting God. Hunter and Dave said, that's why you got to come to Bible study. That's why you got to come to push the person in front of you. He said, that's why you got to come to Bible study. Push them, push them. Don't worry about what they're going to do. They already said they're going to enjoy life. Push them again. Push them again. See how long that declaration is going to last. Push them one more time. Because every time you're confessing, I will enjoy life, it's going to seem like you're being pushed. I will. And sometimes you'll get to the point where you say, another thing, if another thing happens, that thing almost determines whether or not you will or you will not enjoy life. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? But regardless of what comes your way, your choice will remain. I was talking so much about enjoying life, so much about trusting God. One of the partners came up to me at the end of my lesson on Wednesday night and looked at me and says, I don't know how to trust God. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. You must teach on how to trust God. How to trust God. Look at your neighbor and say, today, today you will discover, you will discover how, how you, you can, can Trust God. I wish you would go ahead and shout about that in advance. Trust God. Go to 2 Samuel. Let's just get that scripture. Put your string there or your telephone bill envelope. 2 Samuel chapter 22. We're not going to look at it. We're going to talk about a few things before we look at that. Because this word, trust, is a very intriguing and interesting word. Matter of fact, I personally believe in our society, and particularly dealing with people, this word is overrated. And we put too much weight in this word when it comes to people because people are fallible in other words they can fail they can let you down but I discovered about this word because I've heard this before Reverend Jeff I heard this before Pastor Jeff I heard about this man of God Jeff I ain't letting that go stand don't go back it's time to go forward listen to me Trust is earned. Amen. 
Am I the only one that heard that? Can you ask your neighbor, say, well, why are you looking at him like that? <laughs> Trust is earned. And it's been my experience that trust is not earned. Also, trust is chosen. It's chosen. You take a new job. And they tell you you have to work here two weeks before you get paid. You have never received a check from them before. But you go to work every single morning, unlike church, on time. Turn to your neighbor and say, I knew he couldn't resist that. I knew, I knew he couldn't resist that. On time, every single morning for two weeks and have not seen one check. They have never given you a check. You have just made a choice to trust them. When did they ever earn your trust? Have it. Don't even know them. Could be a fat cigar smoking atheist. Sitting in the accounting room calling shots, but you are there. Turn to me to you, they say, Why you gotta be a fat cigar smoking atheist? I mean, come on. Why couldn't he just be fat? Or why couldn't he just smoke cigars? Tell you you're gonna get a certain amount at the end of two weeks, and you put so much trust in that. You call people. I know I've been on you for 40 years now. Lord, I hope I don't loan anybody any money that owe me for 40 years. But on next Friday, I'm going to pay you. You have not received one paycheck, but you're making calls. I tell you what, I got you. Going to pay you on next Friday. Hang up the phone. Prepare to go to work the very next day, and for two weeks, you're off, you, you owe, you owe, so off to work you go. And the man just told you he's going to pay you in two weeks, and you haven't gotten one dime. He hadn't earned anything. You just chose to trust him. You, you get up, make a doctor's appointment, first time at the doctor. Go into the examination room, and the doctor comes in and tells you to take off all your clothes. <laughs> Never met him. <laughs> Just walk in. Hi, I'm Dr. Uh, David. There are no Dr. Davids in here. I, I need you to take off all your clothes, lay up on this table. All that. You see it? Do you see it? All that. They give you this little, little piece of uh, sheet. Paper. What doctor y'all go to? You got paper. I still get claw. And don't even give you enough. Lord, you see that too, huh? That's why I told the lady, I said, man, I was in the hospital. I said, give me two of them. I want one for the back and one for the front. Lay your flesh down on that table. And that man goes in your ear, in your eye, up your nose, under your arm. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Tell you to get up, put your clothes on. Comes back in there with a little piece of paper. Write something on it that you can't even understand. <laughs> Tells you to take that to somebody else that you've never met. <laughs> Hand that piece of paper to them. They give you a little bottle with the top on it tells you to take three times a day and every day three times you popping something in your mouth when they earn when did they earn it 
You walk in here this morning, just set all your weight down on a chair with a lot of people on that same chair. You don't know, you've never sat in that chair in some cases before. You didn't turn the bench over to see the weight capacity. You see all them heavy weights on your row? Turn to your neighbor and say, that, that's not this row. That's... <laughs> Sit down, never bother. <laughs> Go over to visit certain places, and they ask you if you want something to drink. Give a waitress your order. They go in the back where you don't even know if there is a kitchen back there. <laughs> Come out with a plate of food. <laughs> Set that plate of food down before you. Thank you so very much. Ooh, this looks good. <laughs> Get on airplanes. These days, they keep the cockpit door shut. You don't even know if there's people in the cockpit. <laughs> it would be interesting after you have taken off and buckled down, because you strap yourself in the chair. And you hear the captain come on, thank you for flying such and such in airways. We thank you and we appreciate that. Sit back and enjoy your ride. This is a recording. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you you are going to Aruba. That plane takes off. There are no reference points. You don't see the local Wawa. Come on, it would be nice if, okay, yeah, I know they're going in right there. Okay, that was a wah wah. <laughs> Just get on. Don't know if they're going to pull up to the gate of hell. <laughs> Just not, I'm going to Aruba. Here we go. <laughs> I asked Dr. Didi once. I said, would you trust somebody who lied to you? Somebody maybe who talked about you, said negative things about you, put you down, didn't seem like they had their best interest. She said, no, no, I don't trust them. I said, I'm the one. Oh, I, I know you was talking about you. No, I was, because I've lied to you. I've said negative things to you. I've treated you unfairly, but yet you say you trust me. But the one you don't choose to trust is the one who doesn't have the ability to go on with you because you made a choice with me and you didn't make a choice with them, but we have done the same thing to you. All soul. <laughs> Turn to your name and say, this man got me thinking about this now. He got me thinking about this. Come on, at least. What about this urn stuff? Now, we're going to get to it because there are experiences that goes along with our choice that will either take us into proving that our choice was right or proving that our choice was wrong. I choose to trust. Now, there are episodes and experiences that will fortify that trust both ways. Because I choose to trust them until they have given me reason not to. Oh, I'm going on this side. <laughs> when did you stop trusting them? You, you, you made a choice to trust them, or you made a choice to trust it, but the minute you sat down in a chair and that chair collapsed, you are never going to just sit down again without checking to make sure that that chair is going to hold you up because a, a chair let you down before. And so now, based upon the experience 
that I've had with choosing to trust it, a thing, or a person, watch this, if it proves to work in my favor, then I will continue to trust it. And I have trusted things for 20 years sometimes, and then out of nowhere, they do something that now causes me to no longer trust them. See, that's why, that's why I don't put so much emphasis on this word when it comes to people because people are fallible. And I've seen where relationships can't go on when trust has been broken. I don't trust you anymore. I don't know if I can go on with you. When has Trump's trust ever trumped love? Trust has never been designed to trump love, but love to trump choice. Because all of us have given God reasons why he shouldn't trust us. And if he decides not to trust us based upon one experience or two experiences, hunch your neighbor say, in my case, four or five. <laughs> Come on, talk to me straight here. But his love supersedes his trust towards us so that he can continue with us in love. And even when your husband or your wife has broken that trust, guess what? If love is in place, love covers a multitude of fault and sin, and yet I can go on with them because I love them more than I trust them. Relationships stop because people say, I don't trust you anymore. But what if your relationship stopped with God if we ever gave him reason not to trust us? Hmm. We get in our cars. Not even concerned about the fact it won't start. Matter of fact, running late while we're in the house. But we don't run out extra early to make sure this car won't start. We jump in the car, it starts. We trust it. Then we go down roads where Mack trucks are coming this way and our little cars are going this way and the only thing that's dividing us is a little double yellow line that says you should stay on this side and you should stay on that side. How do we know that a crazy man isn't driving that Mack truck that comes our way? And yet we don't even bother. We see the Mack truck coming. We don't pull far to the end of the shoulder. Now, if a Mack truck has ever come over that line on you, you will always be in the position where you say, mm, I, I better get wide over here because I remember that before. And the only encounter that causes you to have that disposition is when what you have chosen to do relative to this trust has been violated. I'm being dry. Who the, you got cell phone in this ear, piece of chicken, mascara this way, and driving with your knee when a Mack truck is coming your way. And you just drive like. When has the person in that truck ever earned your trust? But episode after episode allowed you, when you're with people in those situations, either builds in you a trust because no one has ever crossed that line on you before. Now I can continue to drive uninterrupted, believing that they will stay on their side and I will stay on my side and we will live happily ever after. My question to you, if God has never given you any reason why you should not trust him, why don't you? When it comes to your last and him saying, I will provide for you every need, We have had episodes, even in our own lives, our word has not been good. And when your word is not good, you will sometimes think that God's word is no good because your word is no good. 
And you cannot trust what he says when trusting him is a choice. Say, trusting God, trusting God is, easy. is easy. I choose to. I choose to. And he has. Yes. He has never given any one of us any reason. Amen. We're going to look at some scripture references here in a moment. But I've watched people over the years who have said certain things about God and did not get what they thought they were going to get, be a witness to him possibly not getting back to us. Like my dear associate, my dear friend, he preached the gospel, but then you put a bullet in your hand? My experience with God is not going to be dictated by or through and by anybody else's experiences because you don't know what that beloved Christian who is at church shaking, shouting, and preaching, you don't know what they're doing in the midnight hour when nobody's around. But yet you base what God has said to you on a so-called another believer's experience. That's why you got to have some experiences of your own. Now, ladies and gentlemen, keep living, and I guarantee you, you will have the opportunity to see. Some of y'all looking at me like, I don't need to keep living because right now I got an opportunity to find out. Some of you are going through stuff things right now, and you can put your hand in this, oh man, and get yourself out of it, or you can finally choose, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. Now, maybe it's just a headache, but if you handle headaches on your own, you are saying, I'm going to have to handle cancer on my own. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the headache is an opportunity for you to have an experience where you trust God without popping in the Advil. Oh, I'm losing my crowd here, boy. Are you hearing me? And people can stand in your way in allowing you to experience trusting God. Okay, Isaiah said, Isaiah said, it was not until King Isaiah died that I saw the Lord. Because my eyes were so dependent upon him that I could not see God because of him. Right. Now, I need to have experiences for myself now when my crutches have been pulled away from me, what am I going to do at this point? Say, I will enjoy life trusting God. Breland, how you looking, man? You looking, you looking, you looking, you looking all right? Come here. Breathing, breathing real particular about herself. She like a guy, you know. So, no, don't, don't bring her all the way now. Back, back up one step. Let's back up another. Let's do like we, we used to do when you were small. Okay. Jump, jump down. And and I, I'm I'm gonna catch you. you. Hey, don't you jump on me! I thought this was gonna work in the other way. This girl has that kind of confidence in me that she will jump. That's not what I want her to do. I was trying to prove another point. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I said Lord and Jesus. But years ago, when this girl was smaller, Pastor Rick, younger, lighter, lighter. <laughs> low, wasn't she lighter? 
I said, Bree, come on, baby. And she didn't run that. No, run back. We're going to have some fun. Jump. And without any hesitation, she would jump. Now, God, dog. No, what I'm thinking about, because I know this one. I know my word has been proven over and over again, even at this age. See, this illustration won't even work because I have proven to her over and over again, if I tell her to jump, that man is going to catch me. Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. Morning this week, I'm sowing my seed. I'm trusting God. I'm overcoming. I'm trusting God. I'm not going to worry. I'm trusting God. I'm not going to fail. I'm trusting God. I'm not in despair. I'm trusting God. Discipling is a commandment of God. And I don't know how it is that people just can kind of walk away, do what they want to do, and not be concerned about their responsibility to minister to the brothers and sisters who are looking to them for encouragement. Because not only are we the light of the world, but we are the salt of the earth. And saints need to minister to saints. Dr. Mike teaches us that Jesus' last command should be our first concern. This five-disc CD or DVD set is available at www.spiritoffaith.org or call 1-888-630-4540. Also included with this package is the Discipleship Manual with detailed instructions on how to be a disciple maker. So go therefore and make disciples of all nations. It's not about you, it's about the kingdom. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to become a Living by Faith Partner of Purpose today. We thank you for your financial support, which has enabled this program to bless millions around the world. You are helping us to make it happen.